Welcome, story time buddies! Sweet Pea is picking out a few of his favorite books to read before bedtime. Do you like story time? That's great! The first story is about how Pete and his friends see things in a new way. Let's find out how in Pete the Cat and His Magic Sunglasses by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete the cat did not feel happy. Pete had never, ever, ever, ever been grumpy before. Pete had the blue cat blues. Then, as if things were not bad enough, along came Grumpy Toad. Grumpy Toad was never happy. He always wore a frown. But Grumpy Toad was not grumpy today. He said, This cool blue magic sunglasses make the blues go away. They help you see things in a whole new way. Pete put on the cool blue magic sunglasses. He looked all around. Right on! The birds are singing. The sky is bright, the sun is shining, I'm feeling all right. Pete thanked Grumpy Toad for the cool blue magic sunglasses. He went on his way and soon he saw Squirrel. Squirrel did not look happy. Pete said, What's wrong, Squirrel? I'm so mad! Nothing is going my way! I only found one acorn today! Pete said, Try this cool blue magic sunglasses. They help you see things in a whole new way. Squirrel put on the cool blue magic sunglasses and looked all around. Awesome! The birds are singing. The sky is bright. The sun is shining. I'm feeling all right. Pete said goodbye to Squirrel and continued on his way. Soon, he saw his friend Turtle. Turtle did not look happy. What's wrong, Turtle? Pete asked. I'm so frustrated. Nothing is going my way. I am all upside down today. Pete said, Try this cool blue magic sunglasses. They help you see things in a whole new way. Turtle put on the cool blue magic sunglasses and looked all around. Far out! The birds are singing. The sky is bright. The sun is shining. I'm feeling all right. Pete kept rolling along until he saw Alligator. Alligator did not look happy. What's wrong, Alligator? Pete asked. I'm so sad. Nothing is going my way. No one wants to play with me today. Pete said, Try this cool blue magic sunglasses. They help you see things in a whole new way. Alligator put on the cool blue magic sunglasses and looked all around. Rockin! The birds are singing, the sky is bright, the sun is shining, I'm feeling all right. Pete was rolling along and feeling all right when suddenly he fell back. The cool blue magic sunglasses went crack. Uh-oh! Pete didn't know what to do without those sunglasses. Just then, Pete looked up at the tree. Wise old owl said, 
speed, you don't need magic sunglasses to see things in a new way. Just remember to look for the good in every day. Pete looked around without his sunglasses. Too cool! The, the birds, birds are singing, singing the sky is bright, the sun is shining, we're feeling alright! What a great story! Magic sunglasses are cool, but you don't need them to see good in the world. In the next story, Pete and his friends are on a search for cupcakes. Let's see what happens as we read Pete the Cat and the Missing Cupcakes by Kimberly and James Dean. Pete and Gus were as busy as could be. They were getting ready for the cupcake party. It started at three. They were making cupcakes for everyone. Pete and Gus counted them just for fun. They had ten when they were done. Oh no! Hang on! Some of the cupcakes were gone. They were sure there had been ten. Pete said, Maybe we need to count again. They counted the cupcakes lined up straight. Now there were only eight. It looked like someone had taken two. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then they found a clue. Gus said, Look what I have found. Sprinkles on the ground. I bet it was Squirrel. She loves sprinkles. Squirrel said, It wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been at the spelling bee. Uh-oh. More cupcakes are missing. Come and see. This was too weird. Two more cupcakes had disappeared. Now there were only six. Someone must be playing tricks. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then they found another clue. Pete said, I bet it was Alligator. He loves to eat. Alligator said, It wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been learning my ABCs. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. Now there were only four. Someone had taken two more. But who? Pete and Gus did not know what to do. Just then, they found another clue. I bet it was Turtle, said Pete. I know, Turtle loves sweet. Turtle said, It wasn't me. It couldn't be. I've been swimming in the sea. Uh-oh, more cupcakes are missing. Come and see. What on earth was going on? All the cupcakes were now gone. Pete and Gus did not know what to do. They started looking for another clue. They found Grumpy Toad with icing on his face. Pete and Gus have solved the case. I am so sorry. It was me. I could not stop with just one. I ate and ate till there were none. Everyone agreed. Grumpy Toad would have to miss the fun. He could not come after what he had done. Pete said, But wait! Grumpy Toad made a mistake. This is true. Let's give him a second chance. That's what friends do. Pete told Grumpy Toad they would give him another chance. He was so excited, he did a happy dance. The night of the party was so much fun. 
Grumpy Toad brought more than enough cupcakes for everyone. The end. I love cupcakes. Do you like cupcakes? I'm glad Grumpy Toad's friends forgave him and that he brought lots of cupcakes to the party. On to the next story. In this story, Pete learns the importance of friendship. We learn how as we read Pete the Cat, Robo Pete by James Dean. What a great sunny morning! Pete can't wait to play baseball with his friends. Do you want to play catch? Pete asks Larry. I can't, says Larry. I'm going to the library. Do you want to play catch? Pete asks Callie. I was about to go for a bike ride, says Callie. Do you want to play catch? Pete asks John. I can't right now, says John. I have to paint the fence. <sighs> Pete wishes his friends would do what he wants to do. It's no fun playing catch all by himself. If only I knew another me, Pete thinks. And like that, Pete has a great idea. Pete builds a robot. He programs it to be just like him. Welcome to the world, Robo Pete. Pete says to the robot, You're my new best friend. We'll do everything together. And I want to play catch, says Pete. Great idea, says Robo Pete. Pete and Robo Pete play catch. Wow, says Pete, running after the ball. You sure can throw far. Robo Pete throws farther and farther until... Time out, says Pete as he tries to catch his breath. Let's play something else. I want to play whatever you want to play, Robo Pete says proudly. How about we play hide and seek, says Pete. That will be fun, says Robo Pete. Pete finds the best hiding place ever. He's sure Robo Pete will never find him. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, shouts Robo Pete. Ready or not, here I come. Gotcha! Shouts Robo Pete, tagging Pete. Hey, how did you find me? Says Pete. With my homing device, says Robo Pete. I can find anyone, anywhere. Okay, enough hide and seek, says Pete. Let's play some guitar. Pete teaches Robo Pete how to play a song he made up. You have to feel the music, Pete explains. Okay, says Robo Pete. To feel it, I need to play loud, explains Robo Pete. Pete tries to stop Robo Pete, but Robo Pete can't hear him over the noise. This is fun, says Robo Pete. This is awful, says Pete the cat. Okay, says Robo Pete. Let's ride our skateboards instead. Before Pete can answer, Robo Pete's feet transform into a motorized skateboard with super speedy wheels. Let's go, Robo Pete shouts. Wait, calls Pete. Pete chases after Robo Pete. He has no idea where Robo Pete is going. Robo Pete crashes into the sandbox at the playground. Are you okay? Pete asks his robot. I am a robot. I am indestructible, says Robo Pete. What is this strange place? It's a playground, says Pete. 
He waves to his friends. This is Robo Pete, Pete says to Callie, Larry, and John. I made him myself. Cool, says Larry. We are going to help John finish painting, says Callie. And then we are going bike riding. I want to go on the slide, interrupts Robo Pete. Robo Pete, I want to help my friends paint the fence, Pete tells his robot. Paint the fence, that would be great, Robo Pete says. I am programmed to paint faster than anyone. Pete and his friends try to help, but Robo Pete paints too fast. So instead, they ride bikes and they read books. And after Robo Pete is done painting, they help him clean the brushes. Pete realizes that it doesn't matter what they do. Just being with his friends is what makes it fun. Did you like that story? So did I. Robo Pete was just what Pete needed to learn the importance of friendship. In the next story, titled Pete the Cat and the Treasure Map, Pete and his ship crew search for treasure and find surprises along the way by James Dean. Captain Pete looks across Cat Cove. The sun is sparkling on the water. It's a beautiful day for an adventure. Something flies toward Captain Pete's ship. It's a parrot. Squawk, says the parrot. She gives Captain Pete a crumpled piece of paper. What is it? asks first mate Callie. Captain Pete looks at the paper. There's a long trail that ends with an X. It's a treasure map, he says. Treasure, says first mate Callie. Where? On Secret Island, says Captain Pete. Let's go, says first mate Callie. Woohoo, cries the crew. Treasure! treasure. Swoosh! Splash! Captain Pete steers the ship through the big waves. The salty wind pushes the sails. The ship is going really fast. Good job, mateys, says Captain Pete. We'll be there in no time. Uh-oh. Captain Pete spoke too soon. He spies something coming toward them. What is that? Asks first mate Callie. A giant arm reaches up and splashes the water. It makes a wave that crashes down on Pete's boat. Grr, splash! Squawk! Cries the parrot. Arr! Yells the crew. Grr, splash! Another arm comes crashing down. The crew is scared, but not Captain Pete. He knows that the monster isn't trying to scare them. He's rocking a cool beat. Captain Pete takes out his guitar and strums. The monster rises out of the water. The crew takes cover, but the monster stops when he hears Pete playing. He nods his head along. He's not a scary sea monster. He's an awesome sea drummer. Rock on, says Captain Pete. Thanks, booms the monster. Oh no, Captain, shouts first mate Callie. A big storm is coming. Batten down the hatches, says Captain Pete. Everyone gets ready for the storm. The waves toss the ship. But the crew is brave. Captain Pete has an idea. Hey there, friend, he yells to the sea monster. We need some help. The monster grabs the ship with his giant arms and gives it a great big boost. The ship moves right through the storm. Hooray! Shouts the crew as the monster swims up to the boat. 
Thanks, friend! Yells Captain Pete. No problem, booms the monster. Land ho! Yells first mate Callie, pointing out over the sea. All the pirates rush to look. It's Secret Island, says Captain Pete. On the beach, their buddy Grumpy Toad is waiting with a glittering pile of treasure. Ahoy, mateys! You got my map, Grumpy Toad says. Treasure is no fun if you can't share it with your friends. The crew is so happy, they do catwheels in the sand. Thanks, Grumpy Toad, they shout. I think we're missing something, says Captain Pete. Let's play some music. What a great idea, says Grumpy Toad. The pirates load all the treasure onto the ship. Captain Pete takes out his guitar and strums, but something is missing from his song. Our drummer, Captain Pete says as the sea monster pops his head above the waves. Would you like to join my crew? Aye, booms the monster. Rock on! Captain Pete says as the monster joins in on a rocking pirate tune. Captain Pete's crew is complete. All the pirates sing, Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for us. That was quite a story. Pete and his ship crew made a new friend and found an old friend with a treasure. Have you ever wanted to visit the moon? Pete would like to take a trip to the moon. In the next story titled, Pete the Cat Out of This World, we'll find out if he does. By James Dean It's a great day. Pete the Cat is going to space camp. Pete meets his bunkmate Glenn. As they unpack, there is an announcement. Welcome, space campers. Please head to the classroom. Your mission begins now. Time to suit up, says Pete. He and Glenn put on their uniforms and race to class. There are so many cool things to do and super neat stuff to see. Astronauts Tom and Chris talk about the trips they've taken, and they give a sneak peek at future space trips. It would be totally rad to go to space, says Pete. The campers find out what it feels like to be an astronaut. They go in the zero gravity chamber. They ride in rovers. They even build rockets. Pete's rocket flies very, very far. Way to go, Pete! shouts Glenn. Next stop is Mission Control. We have some exciting news, says Tom. Our next flight leaves today. We're going to the moon, and we have room for more. Pete, do you want to go? asks Sally. That would be awesome! says Pete. It's time to buckle up and settle into the space capsule. Five, four, three, two, one. Lift off! Their ship speeds through space. They blast past a satellite and even spot a comet. Tom and Sally have a rocking surprise for Pete. His guitar! He plays a groovy interstellar song for them. Mission Control listens in. In no time at all, they arrive on the moon. They are ready to explore. The astronauts collect rocks and map out the moon's surface. Pete has a very important job to do. 
he straps on a jetpack and heads toward Mars. He takes tons of pictures. Oh no, Pete lost track of time and the moon is far, far away. He has to make it back to the ship before it blasts off. Phew, Pete made it back in the nick of time. The astronauts head home. And there's time for a few more tunes. Pete sure knows how to make an entrance. Pete's trip to outer space was out of this world. Still, he's psyched to have his feet back on solid ground. Rock it on, Pete! Let's jump right into the next book. Grumpy Toad learns that it is better to share in... Pete the Kitty and the Groovy Playdate by Kimberly and James Dean Pete the Kitty jumps out of bed. I cannot wait! Grumpy Toad and I have a groovy playdate! Hey, Grumpy Toad! I'm ready to play! It's going to be an awesome day! Pete wants to play with Grumpy Toad's cool blue truck. Zoom, zoom, vroom, all around the room. But Grumpy Toad starts to whine. That truck is mine, mine, mine. Pete the kitty says, No worries, that's okay. I'll find something else to play. Pete finds some blocks. Let's build a city, says Pete the kitty. But Grumpy Toad starts to whine. Those blocks are mine, mine, mine. Pete the kitty says, No worries, that's okay. I'll find something else to play. Pete sees a superhero cape. Fire out! Have no fear! Super Kitty is here! But Grumpy Toad starts to whine. That cape is mine! 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 Grumpy Toad has all the toys and Pete has none. This playdate is just not fun. Pete is sad. Pete is blue. He thinks about what to do. Grumpy Toad, wouldn't it be better if we were playing together? Grumpy Toad says, My pile of toys has grown, but it's no fun playing alone. Grumpy Toad thinks of all the fun he and Pete have together. Yes, sharing would make this play date so much better. Grumpy Toad shares his truck with Pete. You push me and I'll push you. Zoom, zoom, vroom, all around the room. Grumpy Toad shares his blocks. Here are the blocks, Pete the Kitty, for you and me to build a city. Grumpy Toad shares his cape. Okay. Time for superheroes to save the day. Have no fear. Wonder Toad and Super Kitty are here. Grumpy Toad shares all his toys with Pete. They play and play and play. What a groovy, awesome day. Thank you, Grumpy Toad, for sharing your cave, your truck, and your blocks. Wow! Sharing rocks! The end. Do you share your toys? Excellent! You should be proud of yourself! Oh my! We have read six books together and we are still not finished! Sweet Pea has a few more stories picked out. In the next story, Pete tries over and over to make a yummy dessert for the bake sale. Let's see what he creates in Pete the Cat's Groovy Bake Sale by James Dean 
Pete the cat is excited about his school bake sale. Pete wants to bake a treat. What should Pete bake? Pete loves sweets. Pete loves cookies. Pete loves pies. Pete loves brownies, cakes, marshmallow treats, and ice cream sundaes. I'll make cookies, Pete thinks. Pete takes out eggs, flour, sugar, and, of course, chocolate chips. He puts everything in a bowl. He stirs and stirs. Pete makes a big mess. He rolls the dough into balls and his mom helps put them into the oven. They wait for the cookies to bake. They smell so yummy. Then things smell less yummy. Some of the cookies are burned. Pete has to start over. What else can he make? He tries to make ice cream sundaes, but they turn into ice cream soup. He tries to make pudding pie, but runs out of crust. The kitchen is a big mess. He has no treats for the bake sale. You'll find something yummy to bring to the bake sale, says Pete's mom. He has some berries, vanilla pudding, and a few cookie pieces. I've got it. Pete says. I'll use a little bit of all of it. So he adds whipped cream and berries to the pudding and stirs. Then he adds some cookie pieces to the mix. Carefully, he scoops some onto a tray. Pete puts the tray in the fridge. The next morning, it is a tray of tasty, groovy, berry goodness. His mom helps him scoop his treats into little cups. He brings them to school. Pete puts his berry cups on the bake sale table. What is that? asks Callie. Groovy berry goodness, says Pete. His friends give it a try. His dessert is a hit. Soon all the treats are gone. But Pete saves one. He gives it to his mom. Thanks for your help. What do you think of Pete's sweet treat? It looked delicious. I'm glad that he didn't give up when he burned the cookies. He kept trying until he made a berry treat that his friends loved. Speaking of treats, Pete makes a s'more for a special someone. Let's find out who in. Pete the Cat Goes Camping by James Dean Pete is excited to go camping. This is his first time. Don't forget your sleeping bag, says Dad. Or your hiking boots, Mom says. The campsite is deep in the woods. Mom and Dad set up the tent. Pete and Bob help collect sticks so they can make a fire later. Pete and Bob go for a hike. Bob shows Pete the footprints of different animals. Do you think we will see anything cool? asks Pete. Maybe, says Bob. Pete and his dad go fishing. They must be very quiet and very still to catch a fish. Fishing takes a long time. They finally catch some fish. Mom builds a fire. She cooks the fish for dinner. It tastes yummy. Next, 
Pete toasts marshmallows. Pete makes s'mores with chocolate and graham crackers. It starts to get dark out. Bob tells Pete a story about a scary, hairy giant. The giant lives in the woods. His name is Bigfoot. Do you think Bigfoot lives here? asks Pete. No one has ever seen Bigfoot, says Bob. Don't let Bob scare you, says Dad. Bigfoot is not real, Mom says. Ah, <sighs> Pete sighs with relief. But if he's real, I bet he's friendly, says Dad, and likes s'mores too. That's not scary, thinks Pete. Maybe he wants a s'more. Pete leaves one for his hairy friend. Soon it's time for bed. Lights out, boys, Dad says. Bob and Pete share a tent. Pete gets into his sleeping bag. It is cozy, but he cannot sleep. The woods seem extra dark, and all the sounds seem extra loud at night. Pete hears a weird swooshing sound. What is that? He asks Bob. That's just the wind, says Bob. Pete hears an odd chirping noise. What is that? He asks out loud. Those are just the crickets. Pete hears a strange hooting sound. What is that? He wonders. That's just an owl. Pete thinks of his friend Owl. Pete hears a loud snapping sound. Crack! What is that? He wonders. But Bob is already fast asleep. Pete listens carefully. Crack! Is it Bigfoot? Pete peeks outside. It is too dark to see anything. When Pete wakes up, He checks the spot where he left the s'more for Bigfoot. The s'more is gone. There is a note. It says, Thanks for the treat. XOXO. Pete shows his family. Wow, I knew Bigfoot was real, says Bob. Pete knows Bigfoot is not scary. Just because he looks different does not mean he is scary. He even likes s'mores too. Pete had such a great time on his camping trip. He saw a bunny, caught a fish, and learned that different doesn't mean scary. In this next story, Pete can't find his caterpillar. Let's see what happens to it in... Pete the Cat and the Cool Caterpillar by James Dean Pete is on a bug safari. He and his friends are looking for bugs. How many bugs can they find? Kelly spots a tiny black ant. It's building an anthill, she says. Groovy, says Pete. Gus finds a round red ladybug in the mint patch. It has nine spots, says Gus. Nice, says Pete. Marty sees a big black spider. It caught a fly, he says. Neat, says Pete. Pete finds a green caterpillar in the flower pot. I will bring it home to show mom and dad, he says. Mom helps Pete build a home for the caterpillar. They use a big jar. Dad puts lots of little holes in the lid for air. Pete puts the caterpillar in the jar. 
Pete puts some leaves in the jar for the caterpillar to eat. He adds a twig for it to crawl on. Good night, Pete, says Mom. Good night, Pete, says Dad. Good night, caterpillar, says Pete. When Pete wakes up, the caterpillar is gone. Where did it go? Did it run away? It is not gone, says Mom. It did not run away, says Dad. Look, Look they say. The caterpillar is inside there, says Mom. It's called a pupa. Will it stay in there forever? Pete asks. No, says Dad. The caterpillar is changing into something new. What would it become? Pete asks. It's a surprise, says Mom. We must wait and see. Pete waits. Callie comes to visit. Did it come out yet? She asks. Not yet, says Pete. Pete waits some more. Gus comes to visit. Did it come out yet? He asks. Not yet, says Pete. Pete waits even longer. Marty comes to visit. Did it come out yet? He asks. Not yet, says Pete. Pete waits and waits and waits. Then, one day, something finally happens. The pupa starts to wiggle. Something is happening, says Pete. It wiggles some more. Everyone comes over to watch. The pupa cracks open. Something is coming out. What can it be? A head pokes out, then some legs, and then two colorful wings. The caterpillar changed into a beautiful butterfly. Wow, says Pete. The butterfly slowly moves its wings up and down. It is ready to fly. They take the jar to the park. Time to say goodbye, says Dad. Pete opens the lid of the jar. The butterfly flaps its wings. It flutters out of the jar and lands on Pete's nose. <laughs> That tickles, he says. Then the butterfly flies up into the sky. Bye-bye, butterfly, butterfly, everyone says. Let's find a new caterpillar, says Pete. Change is pretty cool. What an amazing story. Do you know that caterpillars turn into butterflies? Cool. And now for Sweet Pea's final story. We will be reading... Pete the Kitty and the Case of the Hiccups by James Dean Hiccup! Oh no! Pete has the hiccups! Hiccup! Hiccup! How do you stop the hiccups? Pete asks Grumpy Toad. How do I stop my hiccups? <laughs> I know, says Grumpy Toad. You stand on one foot. Pete stands on one foot. Hiccup. Pete still has the hiccups. Pete asks Kelly, How do I stop my hiccups? I know, says Kelly. You stand on one foot and hop up and down. Pete stands on one foot. He hops up and down. Hiccup! Hiccup! Pete still has the hiccups. 
Pete asks Gus. How do I stop my hiccups? I know, says Gus. You stand on one foot and hop up and down and sing a song. Pete stands on one foot. He hops up and down. He sings a song. Hiccup! 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 Pete still has the hiccups. Pete asks Bob, How do I stop my hiccups? <laughs> I know, says Bob. You stand on one foot and hop up and down and sing a song and rub your belly, says Bob. Pete does it. Hiccup! Nothing is working. Pete still has the hiccups. Go ask mom, says Bob. Pete asks mom. How do I stop my hiccups? I know, says mom. You take a deep breath. Pete takes a deep breath. Hold your breath and blow it out, says mom. Pete holds his breath. Pete blows his breath out. That's it? Pete asks. That's it, says mom. Pete waits. And he waits. And he waits. The hiccups are gone. Moms are so smart. Have you ever had hiccups? I have, and they are no fun. I'm glad that with his mom's help, Pete was able to make his hiccups go away. Moms are awesome! Thank you all so much for joining me. It's Sweet Pea's bedtime. Good night, Sweet Pea, and good night to all of you. Sweepy! Please like and subscribe.